India may be experiencing the world's worst outbreak of COVID-19, but millions of people still turned out to elect regional leaders in the state of West Bengal on Monday. It's one of five states that has held elections in recent weeks, despite the drastically rising number of infections. Hospitals across the country are facing a critical shortage of beds and oxygen. The US and UK have responded by sending life-saving medical supplies to India. Uh, we want to provide them all the support uh, because they're close friends, increasingly important partners, but also we need this kind of international collaboration. If we're going to get through the pandemic, we're not going to be safe until we're all safe. Once the aid arrives, armed police are deployed to escort the precious cargo. That says regional states accuse each other of stealing oxygen. Soldiers guard a newly opened COVID-19 care centre in New Delhi. There are 500 beds so far, not enough for the many family members who couldn't get their loved ones admitted to hospitals. Even here, people are being turned away, being told that they can only be admitted if they have a referral and have pre-registered. The centre also says that it can't accept those who are critically ill, leaving many with nowhere else to go. As many people die because of a lack of help, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has been criticised for allowing the large political and religious events to go ahead. That led to the government asking Twitter to take down dozens of posts critical of its handling of the pandemic. This stems primarily from the fact that this government does not take very kindly to criticism. It's very sensitive to criticism and also from the desire to try and control the narrative. As days have gone by, this government has come in increasingly for criticism, increasingly from citizens, and also, I may, de, I, I may say, from, from the court. On Monday, the Madras High Court in the southern city of Chennai said India's election commission is single-handedly responsible for the second wave of the coronavirus. Elizabeth Puranam, Al Jazeera, New Delhi. Joining us from New Delhi is Rajiv Dasgupta, chairman of the Centre of Social Medicine and Community Health at JNU. Many thanks for speaking to us here on Al Jazeera. Let me first touch on something we saw there in Elizabeth's package. You're a community health doctor. The fact that millions of people are still turning out uh, to elect regional leaders today in the state of West Bengal, how damaging is that to the situation we're seeing in India in terms of COVID? Well, as we know, the Election Commission has been trying to enforce uh, the, the, the standard operating procedures, but it's been an uphill task. If we talk of West Bengal, what's worrying for West Bengal at this point is a 20 percent plus positivity rate. Uh, and and that's, that, that really implies that it is in an ascending phase of the second wave, and, and these these activities are certainly going to have a role in the transmission. So what do you think is going to happen next? Are we going to see the, the COVID situation getting worse in, say, the rural areas and move out of the cities? Well, several states which are predominantly rural, uh, for example, Chhattisgarh or Bihar, uh, they are also reporting relatively high uh, our values, uh, and, and our value above one implies an ongoing transmission. So on an average, India's R value is 1.27. Now, virtually all states are above one, which means that we would need some more time for this to at least stabilize before it slows down. So in short, all states are in a rising phase. There would be a difference between the rural areas and urban areas, obviously. But uh, if, the, if the experience from some of the states is in uh, rural areas seem to be somewhat more affected now than in the first phase. But that's something we need to watch out for. Let's get into that more, uh, because my understanding is there are a number of different strains of the virus in India now, as opposed to the first time COVID struck. You have the UK strain, the South African strain. You also have this uh, mutant Indian strain. Which strain is causing the most concern, do you think? Well, the, the federal government did well to put together the consortium of 10 
national level laboratories uh, in end December. So the UK strain was identified as early as 28 December. The B1617, popularly uh, the double mutant, but that's not really the 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 term to be encouraged. Uh, the 617 was identified in early February. So it is possible that these are linked to the, at least the initial rise in cases in Maharashtra and Punjab, which accounted for two, two pretty large states, Maharashtra being the second most populous state, uh, both accounting for anything between 75 to 80 percent of daily new cases uh, till about the end of March or even early April, along with another two or three um, states which accounted for about 5 percent uh, contribution each to the national new cases. So in short, uh, it's most likely driven by these new variants. And, and the other uh, issues, such as, uh, such as the election or the religious congregations and so on, they came much later, to be honest. Uh, so, so therefore, as in all countries, second, surge, sorry, second waves are led by uh, emerging mutant forms. So now we are talking about vaccines. We're getting, uh, India is getting a lot of uh, help from the international community, sending across shipments of uh, either oxygen or vaccines and so on. How effective are the vaccines going to be against all these different strains? That is something that the vaccinologists and laboratory scientists are engaged with. Uh, at this point, uh, two vaccines are already in the program, as we know. The third one has received authorization, the Sputnik, from the from the uh, Russian uh, groups. And, and the initial batch of the Sputnik vaccines are going to be directly imported from Russia and inducted into the program. So we, we believe that these three vaccines, which will be available in the program, two are already available and that would be strengthened, uh, would, would certainly have a role in contributing to building up the population level immunity. But that's not really the immediate term. The immediate term over the next few weeks is about providing medical care and, more importantly, seamless medical care, as the central government today underscored. Many thanks for your time, Rajiv Dasgupta, chairman of the Centre of Social Medicine and Community Health at Jehu. Thank you.